Hi Aries, welcome to your June 2023 Astro Taroscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Can you believe it is June already? With that said, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like the channel and uh, like the video. It really does help these get out there. I would be eternally grateful if you did. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And for those of you that are continued subbies, you know Rafi absolutely loves you. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me that you support me in the way that you do. These are general readings, uh, so you know, obviously, take them at your, uh, as they resonate with you and what doesn't. Also, because we're talking about the astrology here, if you're only going to use one of these videos, I advise you to make sure it is your ascendant sign. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity, and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise. Whew. And they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So these will be for your moons. And these will be for the bulk of your read. So on the 6th of June, the transits that we're talking about this month, the first one, on the 6th of June, Venus, the lady of love, pleasure, abundance, is coming into the sign of Leo. But this isn't the usual transit of the, uh, you know, of this sign. It's going to, Venus is going to be moving into the sign of Leo, which is your fifth house for four months. This is going to be a huge deal for all of us in some way, shape or form. And for you, you know, or should I say for all of us, Venus rules pleasure, enhancement, enchantment, uh, sensuality, luck, finances, money, love, diplomacy, harmony. All of these things are coming into your fifth house of joy, pleasure, romance. Um, it really deals with the part of you that is truly expressing who you are. It's love and romance and it's the things that make your heart sort of flutter and your knees go weak. There's things that have a little bit of a, a gamble or a risk are found in the fifth house as well. So gambling, speculative endeavours, um, that kind of thing, you know, playing the lottery, putting money on a horse. I advise you to do that uh, over the course of this transit, absolutely. But if you're going to do this, make sure it's not that you're betting your entire life, right? It's, this is taking a, a little chance here and there. You know, this another way this could be as well, let's say there's somebody that you really fancy and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go in for the kiss. I'm gonna ask them if they wanna go for coffee with me. It's all of those things as well. And the fifth house is also children. If you have children, this can be a time where the uh, connection and the bond between you and your children can really start to lighten. It can be, you know, Venus is a sweetening and a lightening energy. She really does harmonize and enhance everywhere that she goes. And so this could be that you're getting the absolute most of this, uh, you know, this area of your life, all of these areas of your life. If you want to start a health regime in some way, shape or form, or, you know, go into some kind of sport, etc. If you're a dancer or anything like that, this can really help you hone your craft in a way that makes it look and feel effortless. So this could be absolutely lovely. Now, it is also worth remembering that Venus is gonna go retrograde in this sign, which is why she's spending so much time in the sign of Leo. And if you are interested in finding out and how you can get the most out of this entire Venus transit, how you can navigate that retrograde season as best as you possibly can, and also how to use astrology and human design to get yourself to a great space and to use this four months really effectively. Uh, we are putting on a webinar, myself and Denise Matthew, we're going to be putting on a webinar all about the the bounty of regal Venus is what I'm calling it. So there's a link for that in the description box below. You're going to see it popping up on all of my socials and on the community tab in YouTube. So Without further ado, let's get to the cards, right? How do you really experience this transit and how can you enhance it in a more sort of personal kind of way? What do you need to know about this? So you have the King of Cups, so your deep emotional outlook around fun, joy and pleasure is really gonna be coming to the surface. A water sign male, a Pisces, Cancer or Scorpio could help you with this process. You've got the Wheel of Fortune here, so I'm gonna tell you your King of Cups is likely to be a Pisces. 
Um, the Wheel of Fortune does suggest that this is luck, right? The fifth house in the chart is a very lucky energy anyways. The fact that you've got the Wheel of Fortune showing up in this transit for you is very powerful because this means that if you can really tap into how you genuinely feel about things and express those deeper emotions, what can come out is some of the best ideas or creativity that you've ever had that can end up being very lucrative. Then you've got the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands is a fire sign woman, Aquarius, uh, uh, an Aries, Aquarius? Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Now this is about having firm boundaries. So this might even be where you say to yourself, okay, I need to rein in some of my pleasure seeking, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, energies. The other thing, because the Queen of Wands falls with the Wheel of Fortune, she's very likely to be a Sagittarius. So all of the Sagittarian energies and tropes are going to be at play for you throughout this, you know, throughout this month and this transit for sure, uh, and especially over the next four months. So this could be really nice for you. And the message here, the truest message that I can give you for this transit of Venus through your fifth house, don't go it alone, right? Venus is all about connection, harmony, harmonizing, synthesizing. It's an energy of bringing things, people, and connections together. And so look, you've got masculine energy and feminine energy. You've got the, uh, right, in the king and the queen. The king is a feminine masculine energy and the queen is a masculine feminine energy. Uh, why? Because it's the king of cups. Cups, water, feminine element. Uh, fire, wands, masculine element, right? So this is really about bringing those connections together, harmonizing things in a way that really suggests you're not going it alone. So the second transit that I want to talk about on the 11th of June, Mercury, the lord of speed, haste, communication, messages, thought processes, your voice, etc., is coming into the third house because it's coming home into its own sign of Gemini. Now, Mercury is the ruler of Gemini, and this is for you, is bringing, it's for all of us in some way, it's beginning a new mercurial cycle. Mercury is communication, it's technology, skills, interactions of all kinds. And it's coming, and it's also wherever information and even business and commerce are flowing or going in your life, that's where you will find a mercurial energy. Now, this is a transit of your third house, which is seeing you connecting more to siblings, uh, cousins, neighbors even, maybe even in your local, in local area, potentially doing more travel in and around the place that you live, maybe taking short journeys and breaks of some kind, maybe doing a city break here and there, that could be great. You could be communicating more and sharing more with siblings at this time. Um, this could also be as well your current skill set really starts to shine. So this isn't about acquiring new skills necessarily. It's about using the skills that you already have to best effect and that really helping you to shine. So for this, you have the nine of wands, right? So this could be a really good time to correct something that you feel has been a vulnerability. So for some of you, this could also be where you start to turn a, vul a vulnerability into a strength, which could be amazing. Uh, then you've got the Page of Swords, right? So that's a, a very communicative energy. This could actually, I, you know, if you've had problems with siblings, neighbors, or um, cousins, people in your local area, this could be where you voice something, where you talk about something that maybe makes you feel sort of really vulnerable, um, but it could see you really maybe mending a rift or saying, okay, you know what, this needs to be talked about. And you've got this with the Seven of Cups. Now, Mercury can be a trickster energy, right? Especially when it does its retrograde thing. Luckily, we're out of that now, thank heavens. But because you've got this uh, Seven of Cups here, and the page of swords is interviews, etc. Interviews, connections, sometimes paperwork and stuff. There's something here that you're not quite seeing fully. And so this could be where you, maybe you try to do too much at once. And it's like you end up glossing over some detail because you've tried to do too much at this time. The mind is going to be doing 10 to the dozen, right? There's going to be a lot of thoughts, a lot of information flowing backwards and forwards uh, over this, this month. And especially due to this transit. So you really do want to consider 
not adding too much to the plate, right? The way that we shine is when what we're doing is like second nature and we, you know, we're, we're focused on it. Whereas if you try to do too much at any given moment, there is a potential here that you're gonna get into some, um, you know, potentially overwhelm because this is a lot of busy energy, all right? I mean, the third house is a very busy energy anyway. And with Mercury coming in there, which, you know, Mercury is busy and busyness and business, um, this could really ramp up, okay? So your third transit on the 19th of June, Saturn is going retrograde, and that's gonna be going retrograde in your um, 12th house. And on top of that, it's gonna be coming into a direct sextile, the first sextile, the first connection because of the, the Saturn retrograde. This is the first connection that we're gonna have of Jupiter and Saturn in a sextile. Now, this is great, right? Um, this is the first pass of this, and it will the understanding that kind of follows is this. You're gonna be given a moment to understand what's happening in, right? Because Jupiter is now in Taurus, so Jupiter's in your second house. So this gives you a really powerful moment to understand what the opportunities are that are available to you financially. Saturn in Pisces is exalted for you because it's in what we call the true 12th house. Saturn exalts in the 12th, right? This is where it does some really good work. So this is great. You're able to bring crystallization to the world of your dreams and your deepest desires. That Saturn there, even though it's retrograde, right? So this is giving you a chance to rethink some of your plans, to rethink some of your history, to rethink some of your financial uh, you know, endeavors or decisions. This could be, let's say you've made a financial decision a long time ago, you're like, I'm not changing this. This is always going to be my slants, my stance. And then all of a sudden you say, actually, no, you know what? I think I'm ready to change this. This could be uh, habits as well around your finances that are potentially destructive. You could be letting them go now. So this could be you reframing or redefining something like this when it comes to your resources. And in that sextile to Jupiter, um, it's going to be a much deeper, more integrity based idea or understanding of, of what your finances are doing and how they got to where they are. Uh, the opportunity in the sextile that helps you understand your deeper desires and even your spirit, spiritual heritage based ideas and your ideals, um, it can really enhance your earning potential and it might be life like. It might be changing how you really feel about yourself and therefore see you being able to make more money because you value your skills even more so. And with that pass of Mercury through your third house, that could be really nice. For this, you've got the Hierophant card. So potentially establishing something under this, right? Or interacting with a larger body, government and or institutional local authority with the nine of pentacles. So this is gonna see the end of an era. In some way, shape or form, there's an end of an era coming up for you that I actually think could be very good. Then you've got the high priestess. So this is something that's been happening behind the scenes that you are waiting for an answer from. This could be the moment where it finally comes to fruition or comes to light. It could also be that you're getting information around your finances or something that has been hidden from you because it is the 12th house and the high priestess has hidden things revealed. Um, this could be around all of those things, but especially around some kind of finance, money or endeavor. And it may very well have something to do with a local authority, a governing body, etc. And then finally, the last transit that I really want to look at, Venus, the Moon and Mars are all coming into a conjunction in the sign of Leo on the 22nd of June. This is a big deal, right? The reason being because this is three of the personal planets, well, two personal planets and a luminary, right? But this is three personal planets coming together in that fifth house. Now, Venus is already in this sign, so you're gonna to start to get that heads up, but this conjunction of three personal planets will not go unnoticed. And the reason being is because when the personal planets do stuff, we feel it more on the ground on the day to day. And so this is happening in this fifth house. There's an emotional burst of energy that happens here. Venus and Mars sandwiching the moon. It's all happening in the sign of Leo, which is your fifth house. 
it's getting a boost of energy, of connections forged, blessings bestowed, uh, potentially good news around your children if you have them or your professional children. So what I mean by this is like, you know, radiant reality is my child. It's my baby. This is where I put all of my heart, my soul, my energy, you know, thing, something that I love unconditionally, you know, even when it does my head in, <laughs> right? That's how we love our children. That's how we're supposed to love your children anyway. Um, so this could be that. It could be for some of you that you're getting a moment of recognition because the fifth house, it's Leo as well. So Mars is your ruling planet and it's going to be in a trine to your own sign. Venus is going to be trying to your sign. The moon is going to be trying to your sign. So this could be adding great energy and Venus is keeping Mars in check, sort of smoothing off of it, off its edges in some way. Uh, play the lottery. Make a bet. And don't bet the house, the dog, and the kids on the roulette table. Just be sensible about it. But play the lottery. Buy that ticket. Um, make a bet. If you've got some kind of creative endeavor that you want to launch out into the world, do it on this day. Um, another way to use this as well, if you've got a sporting idea or something like a, com a competition, or you know, if there's something that you want to, um, if there's something that you want to submit as part of a competition, do it on this day. The 22nd of June, it's gonna be a powerful day for that, especially because Mars, your ruler, is in that conjunction with Venus. So mum and dad, masculine and, masculine and feminine energy are coming together, right? Look at that, it's even echoed in your first set of triplets there. Um, and for this, you've got the nine of cups, that's a wish fulfilled. Ninth house, fifth house, and 12th house. These are all, um, ninth house, 12th house, and 11th. Fifth house, ninth house, and eleventh house. Those are all houses of wishes, and this conjunction is happening in your ninth. The nine of cups is a wish fulfilled. You've got this with the eight of pentacles. This potentially has something to do with your work, your job, and or your career, which could be amazing. Uh, and then you've got that ace of cups. If there is something you want, if there's something you need to ask for, if there's something you want to go after, that 22nd of June is the day for you to do it. This is absolutely beautiful. This is good news about your work, about your profession. It's a great moment where you personally, in some way, shape or form, are shining. And I mean shining, okay? Use it or lose it, basically. Okay, now let's have a look at your moons. So on the 18th of June, we've got a uh, new moon of Gemini in uh, we've got the new moon in gemini that's happening at 26 degrees and this for you again is happening in your third house that card seems to want out um, and I'm not going to go into great detail with the moons because obviously you're going to get your new moon and your full moon reports. Uh, so you've got the gate 44 and scenting and the message behind this card is follow your instincts because they can lead you to lucrative ideas and endeavours. So there's potential for money to be made here or to increase your earning potential but it will come through following your instincts in some way shape or form so set intentions around that. And then on the 4th of June, you've got the Sagittarius full moon, which is at 13 degrees of Sagittarius. And this is happening in your ninth house of higher beliefs, goals, aspirations, philosophies, uh, legal matters and proceedings, and also higher education and travel. And for this, you've got the gate 19 and sensitivity. And the message behind this is, the full moon is going to see you really attuned to what spirit, God, the universe really wants from you. And whatever is highlighted for you at that time is going to be a path that is truly divine, blessed and special. And providing you follow it, it can lead you to your greatest sense of self uh, evolution. With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic month. Let me know in the comments how it shapes up. And I hope to see you at the Venus webinar. Take care and I'll see you soon.